Hi guys, David Lewis here and what I wanted to give you today was a little bit of value with an insight into the Leaving Cert exam in Leaving Cert Biology for 2022. I wanted to show you how it is unique, how it is the only one of its kind and how it is different to all 17 years of past papers that we have seen previously. Okay, so let's get into it. Every single Leaving Cert for Biology is broken down the exact same way. We've got Section A, Section B and Section C. A lot of people for me incorrectly call these sections the short questions, the experiments, and the long questions. As any of my students would know, they are all short questions, or more importantly, all short answers. Now, behind me on the board, you will see section A, B, and C, and you will see the questions that are in a normal year. This is how the Leaving Cert is broken up, okay? So we can see that there's, in section A, we've got six questions. In a normal Leaving Cert year, you have to answer five, okay? And that's not the important part, okay? The more important thing is we've got two of these questions have to come from unit one, two have to come from unit two, two have to come from unit three. If you do not know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a little bit more information in this video. But after that, get up, go find out what the different units are, and you will see how you can actually build your Leaving Cert as is. Now, because we actually have been given an extra question here, this is absolutely fantastic. Instead of having to answer five out of six, we now have to answer five out of seven. Any of my students will know their five questions before they go into the exam. It's not a case of choice on the day. It's choice as early as possible, so you get to do less, but better. That's what the academy is all about, doing less, but better. Making sure you build a strategy for your exam. A lot of students would know about my exam plan. We do not know where this question is actually going to come from. You suspect it's going to come from unit two or unit three. But as you can see here, we definitely know for an absolute fact that two of these questions come from unit one. More on that in a second, keep that in your mind. Section B is the experiments. That is where I see a lot of students lose marks for simply not being prepared and it's not a student's fault. You get prepared with all your write-ups and stuff like that. There's a certain way to look at these 23 experiments. I don't have enough time to exactly go into it now, but the difference this year is we know that instead of the questions being questions seven, eight, and nine, for your year, there are questions eight, question nine, question 10. In a normal year, what a teacher can say to you is, yes, there are 23 experiments. They can go over the history, and this is what I always do, give you seven or eight of them, tell you to study them, and you know that you're gonna be covered for these questions here because in a normal year, there are three questions you have to answer to. It's the exact same this year. However, we know, that the exper we know where the experiments come from in question eight, nine and, ten, nine, and 10. And instead of actually making it easier for students sitting in the exam, I think they've made it harder because they've told us that this question comes from unit one and subunit 2.1 and 2.5. We know that this is basically the rest of unit two and this is unit three. So a student, instead of having to study seven out of 23 to predict the experiments, now can just leave out question 10, say, for example, which is great, but they will still have to study 15 experiments. So obviously in the grinds, I'm able to show you which ones I feel are coming up and why. And I show you how to take advantage of this, how to take what is a very, very long task and turn it down into 20 pages or less actually when you decide which questions you want to do. Remember, it's all about in advance knowing the paper and preparing for what you have to do on the day. If we look at section C, which a lot of people incorrectly, as I've said, label the long questions, there is usually six questions in a normal year. For your year, we know that there's an extra question there. Again, probably going to come from unit three, maybe unit two. We know this extra question is going to act like a question 13 in a normal year. So if you want to see what that is like, it's going to slot in as question 14, not just at the end of the paper. Um, so you can see where that comes from. And we also know that if you elect to pick one of the last two questions on the paper, usually questions 14 and 15, but in your year, questions 16 and 17, instead of the usual A, B, and C for these questions, where you only have to answer two of them, let me go a little bit slower on this. If you pick, say, question 15 to do, as one of your four out of six in a normal year, you've got a choice of A, B, and C. You only have to do two parts. That's the question done. In your year, these questions are gonna be questions 16 and 17 because of the extra questions added on. And we've got parts A, B, C, and D. You still only have to answer two parts. So again, a student, if they know how, can take advantage of this and kind of like prepare for half a question. Now, in this particular part, there are seven questions we only have to answer four out of seven. So my students with their exam plan, what they do is they build up this five, two, and four, which is 11 out of 17 questions, or even a little bit less if you take this into account. 
instead of studying all 38 topics, which we do cover in the school, a student absolutely specializes in the 11 out of 17, and then we start to build up choice. And that's how I can get a student from scratch to be doing a full Leaving Cert paper and getting and aiming for 100% in 17 classes here at the academy. And then the rest is topping up our grade, topping up our grade. I want you to be actually bored by the time you get into this. And even if you don't come to the academy, you can now take advantage of this. The last thing I would say is, David, how can you do this? Well, you know Unit 1 is food, ecology, and the one-page chapter of the scientific method. So you know by actually developing an exam plan, you can get more return of your investment of time. Because that's what the problem is with the Leaving Cert. It's not each individual thing. It's all the subjects and all the parts and all the extras that go with it. So if you say to yourself, I'm going to study Unit 1, and tactically, like I show you, study the experiments, you know you are absolutely guaranteed well, each one of these questions here is worth 20 marks. So 2 times 20 is 40, OK? Each one of these questions here is worth 30 marks, OK? Over, and then overall, 2 times 30 is, is uh, 2 times 30 is 60. So we've got 60 plus 40 is 100 marks. And then over here, you know for an absolute fact that we've got a unit 1 question here. That's 60 marks. Overall, by studying those, so unit 1 plus the experiments, that gives you and absolutely whopping 40 and 60, which is 100, plus another 60, that's 160 marks out of 400 marks for the entire paper. So that passes you, that gets you 40% of the entire grade just by working a little bit more intelligently. And if we multiply that across the entire year and across the different chapters as well, that really gives us more bang for our book on it. Okay, so what I wanna just state here and stress is your Leaving Cert in 2022 is the first of its kind. It is different to the 2021 Leaving Cert in terms of what amount of questions you have to answer. Okay, but it's still on the same sort of structure here and you need to build an exam plan based on that. And once you do that, what you're gonna see is your grade absolutely rocket into the stratosphere here and you will not be making the mistakes that a lot of students do of spreading themselves too thin.